In this video, we're going to review some of the angle concepts that you learned back in middle school. So this will be in large part a revisiting of some old ideas. In this video too, you're going to see a few different key ideas regarding angle measures. Those are going to be the, the concepts and the ideas that you're going to need to remember from this video. Now a big idea that you should remember from middle school is that vertical angles always have equal measure. You might be saying, but I don't remember what vertical angles are. Vertical angles I'm going to think about as being those opposite or across from angles. The official geometric definition is going to be non-adjacent angles form when lines intersect. And by non-adjacent, we mean not right next to each other. But again, you need to know that they are always going to have equal measure. So in order to set this first problem up and to solve for x, I'm going to take the measure of the first vertical angle, the x plus 16, and set that equal to the measure of the second vertical angle, the 4x minus 5. And now that I've set my problem up, now I can go ahead and, and solve. And there are a bunch of different ways I can start this problem. I'm going to start by subtracting x away from both sides. But if you had something different in mind, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. To undo that subtracting 5, I'm going to add it to both sides. Lastly, to undo multiplying by 3, I'm going to divide both sides by 3 and come up with my value of 7 for x. But again, the key idea you need to take away from this video with you is that vertical angles, those angles that are across from each other when lines intersect, will always have equal measure. The next one has to do with the angle addition postulate. Here's how I think about the angle addition postulate. I think if I take the measures of two smaller angles and add them together, that's going to be equal to the measure of the larger angle. So in the second example, they tell me that the measure of angle ABC is 118 degrees. Well, angle ABC is that big green angle, and its measure is 118 degrees. You probably can notice by looking at the picture that that big green angle is made up of the two smaller ones within it. So my equation is going to reflect that. If I take the two smaller ones within, in other words, the 3x plus 1 and the 4x minus 3, and I combine them together, I add them together, the result is going to be that of the large green angle, or the 118 degrees. So in this equation now, I'm going to clean up the left side by combining my like terms. I'm going to add 2 to both sides so that 7x's are equal to 120. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And when I go ahead and divide both sides of this equation by 2, I find the value of x to be 120 divided by 7. I'm going to leave it right as a fraction, as an improper fraction. The next key idea you need to be aware of is that linear pairs of angles are always supplementary. Now, linear pairs of angles are going to be a pair of angles that are right next to each other or adjacent on the same straight line. So because these two form a straight line, we say that they're supplementary, which means that they sum or add to 180 degrees. So my equation for this third one would be to take the two angles together, the 4x plus 20, and the x minus 10, and together, I know that their measures have to total 180 degrees. So I've got 5x's plus 10 equal 180. When I subtract 10 from both sides, 5x's equal 170. And then when I go ahead and divide 170 by 5, I find that the value of x is 34. The next key idea is fairly similar, but instead of having just two angles that together form a straight line, now we've got more than two. We call those consecutive angles. In other words, one right after the other. And anytime you have consecutive angles that together form a straight line, they are going to also be supplementary, or in other words, total 180 degrees. So again, if I look at all the angles that together make up this red line, I know that together they're going to have to add up to 180. So in other words, the 45 plus the 39 plus the B plus the 24 have to sum up to 180 degrees. 
And when I go ahead and clean up the left side of that equation, I find that combining those constants gives me 108. So B plus 108 together adds up to 180. Subtracting 108 from both sides, I find that the value of B has to be equal to 72. And then the last key idea that you need to be able to apply from this video is the fact that anytime you have angles around a point, they're always going to sum up to 360 degrees. I'm looking at this picture, I have all of the angles around that purple point. Together, I know that some of their degree measures has to be 360. So A plus 60 plus 95 plus 105 together has to sum up to 360. There's nobody here that lies on a straight line because none of these lines in the picture are straight. And that's why I can't use the key ideas from the two preceding examples, but rather have to use that notion or that idea that together they have to sum up to 360. So when I combine the constants on the right side of that equation, I end up with 260. Subtracting 260 degrees from both sides then leaves me with a value of 100 for A. All right, like always, I do want you to take a few minutes to think and to reflect on the important ideas that you're going to need to recall from this video, and then see if you can apply your newfound knowledge to the questions in number two. Remember, I don't care if you get these wrong. What's important to me is that you try. In this table where it asks for a reason, what they're really asking for here is the key idea that you applied in order to be able to determine the angle measure.